Hi, it's Matt here from Go Green Autos. So, a very specific video this one. We're just going to look at the cargo area of the Maxus E Deliver 3 electric van. So, these vans are available with two battery packs a 35 kilowatt hour or a 52.5 kilowatt hour, and it's one body size only. We call that the short wheelbase. There's actually a long wheelbase in the UK, but that's not a panel van, it's a chassis cab for making your own bodies. And that's only available with the larger pack. So the panel van has a sliding door on the near side, but you don't get one on the driver's side. As standard, you get a solid steel bulkhead here separating the cargo area from the passenger area. Uh, the only option with these is to have a glazed window here or not. A little bit pointless probably because there isn't an option to have glazed windows in the back. So you really wouldn't need to bother with a glazed window there. While we're at the back, uh, you do get parking sensors as standard. Just two sensors on the flat part of the bumper. But you also get a camera as well as standard. And then your doors open like that, just as they do with all other vans. However, they do also open 180 degrees, which allows you to load it with a forklift. And there isn't a bar here to release to do that. There's just extra friction on the hinge. So it's much easier to open it past that point and you don't, get, uh, you don't have to touch a greasy old mucky bar to do that. So this is how they come from the factory. They come lined with a rubber floor and also a full length roof lining as well, a sort of felt roof lining, the same as you'd get in the front in the cab. I don't know why all vans don't come like this. It's absolutely ridiculous. With all vans, the first thing you do is get a ply line kit fitted and someone turns up with an impact gun and drills screws straight into your new van. And then you end up with this rattly ply all the time, particularly in the windows, because they use plastic blocks to hold the ply in. And it just makes your van really noisy and rattly. Uh, particularly on electric vans because that's all you can hear is the rattly ply. Uh, it's just a shame that other manufacturers don't line them from the factory because you end up with a much better job. And in this case the lining is that sort of corrugated plastic. It's all in grey, very lightweight, it's not adding weight. No rattle either uh, and it's just a much better job. And then on the floor we've got this rubber matting which is sort of self-adhesive. You can see there, you can sort of push it down at the sides. It goes up the sides a little bit, so it'd give you a bit of protection if you had um, any liquid or, or just brushing out the dust and dirt. It's not gonna get in a, in a crack down there. It's just a much, much better job. I really wish all vans were done like this. In the back here, we've got some really heavy duty lashing rings there. One, two, three, four. However, the brochure says there are six and I cannot see six. Often you would get them up here, but um, I have a feeling they should be in the bulkhead there. There's two holes at the bottom of the bulkhead and, and sort of discs there in the profile of the metal. And I'm wondering whether they've just been missed on this one because there are only four lashing rings in this one. So this van has a cargo volume of 4.8 cubic metres, which is the largest in its class. So the nearest competitor van will be the uh, Nissan ENV 200, and that has a volume of 4.2 cubic metres. And the next would be the Renault Kangoo Maxi, the LL21 long wheelbase electric van. That has an area of 4 cubic metres. And then we've also got the Peugeot Partner and Citroen Berlingo in the long body version and that has a capacity, well a, a volume of 3.7 cubic metres. So yeah, these have the largest of uh, all the other small electric vans. These have uh, leaf spring rear suspension like the ENV 200 but they have the greatest payload. So on the Maxus you can carry 865 kilos if it's the smaller battery or 905 kilos with the larger pack. And the Nissan ENV 200 uh, 40 kilowatt hour can carry 705 kilos. So let's do some measurements. I've had a look at that door where that shuts so I know what to measure up to on the rear bumper and the floor length is 86 inches which is uh, 
218 centimeters and the width between the wheel arches if I can get my tape measure to lay flat is four foot which is 122 centimeters just look at the uh, load height uh, not particularly accurate but just from looking at uh, the eye level it looks to be 54 centimeters which is just over 21 inches so next I'll just do total access size which is 122 centimeters which is four foot by there's the narrowest part of the door, something like that. 125 centimetres, which is 49 inches, so just over four foot square. The other dimension that's probably worth taking is from the point on the bulkhead that protrudes the most to the back doors there. And it's actually two metres to that rubber bung, which protrudes the most on these doors, which is just a smidgen under 79 inches. And then looking at the side door access, we have got a gap here of 72 centimetres, 28 and a half inches. But of course then we've got that bulkhead sticking out there like you do on most vans. So if I just look at roughly the gap from the edge of the door to the worst part of the bulkhead, we're looking at 28 inches, which is 71 centimetres. But yeah, that's pretty good access there on the side door. And you've got a, a plastic strip here protecting the edge of the floor. And then of course you've got your runner there for your sliding door. And then in the back there, you've got one light, which seems to be bang on in the middle of the van. So while this does have the grey lightweight corrugated panelling on all the sides and the bottom of the doors, they haven't put any in the tops of the door. So both rear doors and the siding side door doesn't have any panelling on the top. I guess that's because other markets can have glass. Um, but at the end of the day, you don't get any of this on any other vans. All you'll get on other vans is just a hardboard panel on the bottom half of the rear doors. It's nice to see a lot of rubber seals as well. Obviously we've got the rubber seal there on your main loading aperture. You've got another seal there and another one there. So one more than you would typically get on other vans. And uh, of course you've got the seal uh, on this door, which the other door slams shut onto. You also don't have too much hanging down here to smack your head on. The latch for the uh, right hand door is quite well hidden. Often that will protrude a lot more um, and uh, you can smack your head on it and then you just have a plastic block here which is just a guide uh, it's got an aluminium block here but that's just a sliding guide um, obviously to line the door up it latches on the bottom uh, but yeah far better not to have hardware down here that you're going to smack your head on with all vans one door's got to shut before the other um, but if you get it wrong and that door shut first and then you go and slam that door. There isn't any contact at the top because there is a rubber bung there protecting it. Um, certainly before that latch hitches the bodywork, which is something newer vans have, but many of the older vans don't. And you typically end up with dents here in the door and quite a lot of scratching at the top. So yeah, it's all well designed and the door shut with a nice thud. They feel really nice actually and the side doors are really easy to use and it's not too difficult to get it past its stop position a lot of other vans it takes quite a tug to get it past that so it shuts very easily and it all feels very light and easy to use so that's it because in this video we're just looking at the cargo space in the maxus e deliver 3 electric van but if you want to know more about this van then there are further videos coming on the Go Green Autos YouTube channel.